that brings us up thousands of years later, uh, as people began to collect information, uh, John Dalton came on the scene. Now, John Dalton was an English uh, school teacher. Uh, he didn't teach English. He was from England, and he was a school teacher. And his uh, love was in mathematics and in science. And he did uh, quite a bit of work with what we call today chemistry. And a lot of uh, his influence, or he was influenced a lot by the law of definite composition and the law of multiple portions. Now, he didn't come up with the law of composition or the law of multiple portions. He was influenced by them. As a matter of fact, most of what he brought together and put into his atomic theory wasn't done by him. It was done by people like Antoine Lavoisier um, or Joseph Priestley, Robert Boyle, scientists uh, over uh, several hundred years there in the beginning of modern science uh, had all these ideas, but nobody had thought about bringing the ideas together into one compact idea. And John Dalton did. In around 1803, uh, between 1803 and 1805, he proposed uh, one of the first modern atomic theories. And he did so through the law of definite composition and the law of multiple portions. So what we want to do is let's look at what the law of definite composition says. The law of definite composition says that the elements in a compound are in the same ratio. And that just basically means that something like H2O, water, is going to be two hydrogen and one oxygen. And it's always going to be two hydrogen and one oxygen, a definite composition. Or that something like carbon dioxide is always going to be one carbon and two oxygen. And that all substances, pure substances that we talked about earlier in the year, are going to be um, of a definite composition. And no matter where you go in the world, carbon dioxide is the same. No matter where you go um, in the world, water is always H2O. Okay? Now, the law of multiple proportions also um, influenced Dalton. And it basically states that when two elements combine to make more than one compound, the ratio in those compounds will be small whole numbers. And that's kind of like hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen and oxygen make water, and they also make hydrogen peroxide. And the hydrogen peroxide is in a 2 to 2 ratio, and the water is in a 2 to 1 ratio. But notice, no matter what, it's small whole numbers. And that's the uh, whole idea behind multiple portions. And these two ideas, the law of definite composition and multiple proportions, and the beginning idea uh, of what matter is composed of is what influenced uh, John Dalton. And John Dalton came up with some postulates. And his first postulate stated that all matter consists of tiny, indivisible, indestructible particles called atoms. And these uh, atoms that he uh, referred to were in honor, I guess, of the Democritus Atomos. But uh, this wasn't correct. We know today they're not indestructible, but it was a good beginning. And I think he was influenced by Democritus as well as the other early scientists. His second one was that atoms of the same element have the same mass, size, and chemical properties. And we know today that's not necessarily true either, uh, but it was a good start. We know that uh, there are isotopes and ions and things of that nature today. His third one was the differences in the properties of elements result from differences in the atoms of the elements. And that uh, that's true. His fourth uh, postulate, the atoms in a compound combine in a definite, simple, whole number ratio. And right there you can see the direct influence of the definite, com um, definite composition in multiple proportions. And then his fifth idea, a chemical reaction is the result of the rearrangement, a combination, or separation of atoms. And, and that's really true. A chemical reaction is the taking, the breaking apart of bonds, rearranging the atoms uh, to give us uh, new products. All right, so Dalton's postulates led to uh, an idea uh, for the first atomic theory, but his idea of the atom was pretty simple. The atom is a tiny, indivisible, instructable particle, and all matter is made up of atoms. And this was the solid sphere model uh, with John Dalton. Now. Any questions, go to Mr. Kazi 
at mrkazi.com. Send me an email, and I'll be glad to answer.